week's office politics, we continue our conversation with MSNBC's Rachel Maddow. We talked about what she thinks about covering the personal lives of the candidates. But I begin by asking if Mitt Romney will win or lose the election based on the women vote. The uh, divide stays as big as it is right now. You can't win with women that against mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, I think the underappreciated thing about the gap among women voters and their political preferences right now is policy. That we cover these candidates so much as personalities. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not they have good late night conversations with comedians, whether or not they're smooth when they meet uh, in, in their speeches and when they meet voters out on the campaign trail. But the candidates also represent their parties and the actions of the parties matter and there's not much going on in terms of republican governance in washington they're in charge of the house of representatives but not anything else and so when people are looking for examples of republican governance they're looking at where republicans are in charge and where they actually have governing responsibility and that's in the states and the republican policy choices on women's issues um, and I even resent that idea, but you can't get away from it when you're talking about abortion and contraception yeah. and equal pay and all these things, has been really intense. It's been a really intense couple of years since Republicans won the elections in November 2010 and took over so many states. And their political choices, whether it's the forced ultrasound stuff or whether it's repealing the mm -hmm. Fair Pay Act, the Women's Equal Pay Act uh, at, at the state level, all of these things, the contraception fights, it has an effect on yeah. what people think the, the parties stand for. Should we not go past a certain line when covering these candidates, their personal lives, their families? I mean, should, yeah. we, should we stay substantive it's with a issues? It is a, it is, I, I think in in general, we should avoid it. I feel like unless people are campaigning on policy that they uh, that they want to pursue for the nation that's based on their superior family values, putting down other people's family choices, mm -hmm. then unless it's a hypocrisy issue there, I don't really care. It yeah. does go to the intangibility, like intangible likability factors of the mm -hmm. candidates, whether or not you think, um, in this case, they're good husbands and fathers, and it seems like both of them really yeah. are. Yeah. The problem is the sort of the the the, the, the I guess the, the thing you can't get around here is that the candidates keep putting their families on the political stage. So I don't think the media should be covering their families as a political factor, but they keep introducing their families as having political salience. I'd rather they, I, I realize it's old fashioned, but I'd, I'd rather they didn't. You can't say, you know, this is my family, this is how I interact with my family, and that's why you should vote for me, and also don't report on my family. Yeah. If you put Just them out there, you're putting them in the political sphere. I'd rather they weren't. You said in the past that you're not partisan, mm -hmm. and you lead a major network, the number one rated show on this network. I mean, how do you see your role playing out in the next five, six months? We are trying to increase the amount of useful information That's in the world. Very, here's what's going on in your world. Here's why it is important. Here's what it might mean. And here's what to look for in order to figure mm -hmm. out whether or not it's important. That's the basic I think, fundamental responsibility that we've got to our viewers every day. And you know, I'm a, I am a liberal. Um, I'm not a partisan. I don't particularly care about individual candidates. I don't particularly care about individual parties other than using them to explain what's going on in the world. But I, I do think that we're in a position in the media where being able to say what your opinion is about the world, what your mm -hmm. opinion is about policy broadly, is not does not impede your ability to convey the facts of what's going on in the world to somebody. I'd, I'd put our coverage of what's happening day to day in the campaign up against anybody's in terms of its accuracy and its value. When you get into the chair though in the studio, is there a certain amount of pressure on you? Because you don't exude that, I will say. Hmm. You don't on the air. You seem so comfortable talking the issues as if it's just a conversation you're having for an hour with the American people. Hmm. Well, I don't, I don't feel... Um, I don't feel any pressure to accomplish anything on the air. If you know what I mean, like mm -hmm. I'm not trying to. You don't have do, an agenda. I'm not. Right, I don't. I'm not trying to do something that somebody else assigned me to do. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm trying to explain the world. And the fun thing about an election year is that um, the politi the pace of political news gets so fast. Yeah. And the thing we've all got to decide every day in choosing what to put on the air. I mean, you're in the same boat. Is what of these million things that have happened since I was yeah. last on the air are important? And which one of the, which, which one of the, maybe isn't the most important thing in the world, but it's fun to talk about and how much time do you spend on those?